Despite the arrest of a suspect in the murder of Jean Benet Ramsey, there are still many questions. What about that ransom note, the forensic evidence? Why did it take a decade to pick up a suspect? And what exactly put the Ramseys, that family, under the Boulder Police Department's, quote, umbrella of suspicion in the first place? ABC's Barbara Walter sat down with the Ramseys in an interview that aired on March 17th of 2000. Do you understand why it is that so many people still think you are guilty? I understand that they've been told that by the media for three long years. I'm amazed that the whole world doesn't think we're guilty based on what they've been told. Let me go through some of the major reasons why people feel you are guilty. The beauty pageants. If we had only seen pictures of John Bonet in and, and little jeans and a t-shirt, there might not have been the same feeling, but what we saw in still photographs and in videos was a child dressed like an adult, very suggestive in many of these pictures, lipstick mascara, um, moving around on the stage on these beauty pageants. To many people, this looks perverted. Therefore, there's got to be something wrong here. There is something wrong here if someone thinks that looks perverted. Jean Monnet was an entertainer. She would entertain at the drop of a hat. Little girls dress up and play dress up. You yourself had entered beauty contests. Yes. I'm a junior at West Virginia University. So this was, what, fun for you both it to have to do this? It was the most wonderful time of my life. It's not unlike a father who enjoyed playing baseball as a child. He wants to impart that same love of the game with his, his son or daughter. It's, there's just absolutely nothing wrong with it. They called John Bonet uh, a six-year-old Lolita, a punt-sized sex kitten. The people that, that look at these things and see something perverted, that didn't come from Jean Bonet. That's coming from the viewer, not the child. So let me go through what the motives are. Motive number one. You are guilty, Mr. Ramsey, because there was some evidence that your daughter had been sexually molested. I know, as best I can know, as a father who was with his daughter every day that I was home, she was not sexually abused or molested before December 26th. Okay, but on December 26th, there are some indications that your daughter was sexually molested. Well, Therefore, here's the motive. Um, you were doing it. Maybe you'd done it before. Maybe you just did it that night. Um, perhaps your wife discovered you, whatever it was. John Bonet cried out. You killed her. Well, that fits right in the category of it could have been done by an alien as well. It makes no sense. There is no history. A person doesn't go throughout their lives as a normal human being, one night turn into a monster, slaughter their daughter, go to bed and get up and act normal from there on. That doesn't happen. In these kinds of cases, virtually all of them, I suspect, where there is child abuse in a family, there's a long history. And that's not the case in our family. I have to point out that John Bonet's pediatrician, who had been her pediatrician from birth, has publicly said that he never saw any um, evidence of sexual molestation. There never have been reports from her school. And yet, there is the suspicion. I would have given my life for John Bonet in an instant. And I'm sorry that I couldn't have done it that night. Uh, to be accused of harming my child in any way is, is beyond comprehension. This was a very brutal murder, and yet some of the authorities have said that you staged this, um, that you loosely tied your daughter's hands, that you put the noose, the garrote, to make it look as if uh, uh, some terrible person had done this, that this whole picture was staged. Well, that's absurd. Uh, this was done by a terrible person. The garrote was deeply embedded in Jean Bonnet's throat, her hands were tightly bound. I couldn't get the knot untied. I tried to get it untied even before I brought her upstairs. The fundamental issue is no logic has been applied to any of this case. Why would I, for example, have 
staged this horrible scene and then disturbed it myself, pulled the tape off her mouth, carried her upstairs, tried to untie the hands before I brought her upstairs. If I'd have staged it, I would have wanted the police to see it as I staged it. Mm-hmm. It's not logical. It makes no sense. Let me give the motive that is ascribed to you, Mrs. Yeah. Ramsey. Okay. Was bedwetting a source of tension in your house? Absolutely not. All children have accidents. The motive is that uh, uh, John Benet wet her bed and that you got angry, you lost it, you snapped, uh, you killed her, perhaps accidentally. Um, you were downstairs, maybe she came down, she said, Mommy, I wet my bed. You said, again, John Benet, and you either pushed her or you hit her, uh, you were exhausted, you were furious, you did it. First of all, we know from the evidence that this was a premeditated murder. The way in which she died, the garrote that was around her the neck, noose. the uh, you could the have tape. done it. You could have gotten nervous and no, afterwards you could no. have done it. You could have awakened your husband and said, "I did this terrible thing, but, John, but, but, and but I Barbara, have to stage this." Would, you know, people have said this. Of course, they've said it. But would you? You have a child. Would you? get up in the middle of the night and slaughter your child? We're parents. We love our children. But what do you say when people say, you just snapped? I mean, you know, whatever it was, something went wrong, you did this terrible thing, John then helped you, you staged this whole thing. You know. It's nonsense. Maybe you don't even know that she did it. That's impossible. I mean, it's just, it's absurd. I'm asking the questions you know know people have said, these are the two major motives. Either you sexually molested her or you snapped because primarily Let she Let me tell you bedwetting. something. I'm a cancer survivor of stage four cancer. John has lost a child in an automobile accident. That completely changes your outlook. When you are standing on the brink of death with a terminal illness, your priorities suddenly line up in a row and you know exactly what the important things are in life. And bedwetting is totally insignificant. I love my children. I wouldn't harm them for anything in the world. Now, I don't know how you answer someone that continually accuses you of some absurd notion. Did either of you for a moment suspect each other? No. Not for Absolutely a not minute. for a microsecond. Tom Haney, who was the detective homicide detective from Denver asked me that very question in my three-day interrogation. After three days of listening to him hammer me, I said, don't even go there. If I thought for one moment that Jean Benet Ramsey was murdered by her father, we wouldn't be having this interview right now. Three other family suspects were cleared by the police investigation. Nine-year-old Burke Ramsey did not have the strength police believed the murder required or the ability to write the ransom note. John Ramsey's older son and daughter were not in Colorado that night. The police continued to focus on the parents. Another major factor, the ransom note. The ransom note was written on a pad and a pen from your home and The question is, if the intruder was planning to write a note, why wouldn't he or she have brought their own pad and paper? They knew that the less they brought in the house, the better. But they planned to write a note? Apparently. Before or after the crime? I think think the note was written before Mm -hmm. the crime was committed. What has thrown great suspicion on you, Mrs. Ramsey, as you know, is that some handwriting experts have said that there's a similarity between the writing on this note and your handwriting. This has been inconclusive, but the similarity of the handwriting is the strongest piece of evidence implicating you. Well, if that's the strongest, then there's not much of a case, because we have had handwriting experts to look at my handwriting as well. And on a scale, I believe, of one to five, with five being a totally incomplete match, I was rated at a 4.5. So they were, there's very little. In fact, law enforcement sources in Boulder, Colorado, told me that media reports of similarities between Mrs. Ramsey's handwriting and the ransom note are, quote, grossly exaggerated. One of the questions is, what reason would a kidnapper have for leaving behind both the ransom letter and the body? 
I hope to ask the killer that someday, face to face. We believe that this was a kidnapping, originally, that went bad. Now this person, this creature, its mind doesn't work like ours. It's, it's boiling. So whatever was going through this creature's mind, we can't logically analyze and explain. Another um, indicator of your possible guilt to the police and the FBI is time. It said that only you two had the time and the opportunity to commit the murder, use the noose, this garrot, uh, carry the top child downstairs, write a two and a half page ransom note without the fear of being detected. If it were an intruder, this intruder would be afraid that you would wake up, that Burke would wake up. And yet, but all this time, this takes time. We believe that this killer came into our home while we were gone, waited, was there when we returned. Waited hours. Waited hours. Had plenty of time to write a ransom note. When you were asleep. When we were asleep or perhaps before we even came home. We would have been gone for three to four hours. That is plenty ample you know, time I, I, to find their way and learn yeah. their way around the and house. And be in the house when you return? Be in, yes. Does it sound possible that a killer would sit for hours and hours in your house? Uh, that house was so rambling. There were so many detect- hiding places. Really? He could be hidden for a week and we wouldn't find him. The intruder theory is the major point of debate in the Ramsey case. One of the mysteries cited in newspaper stories was a lack of footprints outside the house. There was snow, but no footprints in the snow, the story said. Therefore, no intruder. But these actual police crime scene photographs taken early that morning before John Bonet's body was discovered show only scattered patches of snow around the house and clear paths to windows and doors. But mysteries abound in this case. When John Bonet's body was found, there was one of her favorite nightgowns next to her, her so-called Bobby nightgown. And so there was the impression that whoever did this cared about this child, left the nightgown, left the blanket. Again, oh, her parents did it, but they, they loved her, so they tried to comfort her, even in death. That's a very strange... That nightgown should not have been there. It's, it's a clue of some type. We don't know what. Look, we know several very positive facts about this killer, we believe. It's a male. It's a pedophile that looks at young female children much differently than you and I do. They look at them with sexual uh, eyes. I've thought about it every day for three years. I've talked to experts. I've talked to experienced homicide detectives. It's the best profile we can come up with.